yo, there are many events coming up in the world of sports. It'd be great to be in attendance for such. Where can we get tickets? SeatGeek. You see, SeatGeek is an app that can help you find the best seats with the best deals. SeatGeek shows you different tickets available with green being the best deals and red not being the hot deals. The best part is it shows you where you'll be sitting at the event. If you use the code SPORTSMECCA, you could get $20 off your first purchase. Get your seat at SeatGeek today. Could it be you calling me down? Foolish heart turns out to be on a beat. All that I am is all that you see. You don't need nobody else. Anymore. Welcome to another episode of the Sports Mecca Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Abramo. As always, I'm joined by my partner, Sam Hengeli. Today, we have the opportunity to speak with Bemidji State women's hockey player, Lindsay Featherstone. Lindsay, Thanks for coming on today. We appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, for sure. To start, really, we'll talk about your Bemidji State career. You finished your fifth and final collegiate season a few weeks ago. Your season ended with a loss to Wisconsin in the WCHA quarterfinals. Can you just talk about how your final college season went? Yeah, you know, I think being an actual senior last year during a COVID year, there was a lot of challenges and adversities that we didn't really anticipate. Um, So just kind of to have that fifth year of a normal amount of games, normal practice times, not being quarantined, having to test, things like that were awesome. Uh, And then, yeah, obviously we went to Le Bon and played Madison in the first round of playoffs. And that Friday game, I think it ended up being 2-1. And that was a super close game. It could have gone either way for sure. And Saturday's game, I know we had a player kicked out kind of early on. And just having to kill off that many penalties in a period, uh, I think, kind of got to us. Uh, I think we went down pretty early. And I think the final was like 5-1. But I think we kind of beat ourselves that game, honestly. What made you – I know – was it the rule for, for hockey? I know it's the same for for college basketball, college baseball, college football players where you can get an extra year. Was that the case for you? Is that why you stayed an extra year? Yeah, so we got an extra year because of COVID. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so we all got – the NCAA gave us all an extra year of eligibility. And I'm, my original class was nine. So four of us came back to Bemidji, and then one had transferred to Ohio State. Did you – think at all like I want to use my last year of eligibility in college at a different school or were you just set on sticking with it at Bemidji State? Um, I don't think I ever it ever really crossed my mind to transfer or enter the portal Um, but I was definitely kind of considering my options of do I graduate and start working and what does that look like or do I decide to come back and what does that look like? And what were the options when you were thinking about that? Yeah, you know, I think obviously coming out last year as a new college graduate in a pandemic, there was a lot of kind of unknowns of what am I going to do? What does the job market look like? Um, So I for sure would move home to the cities. And that's my plan this year is to move home in a couple of weeks. And then, you know, just coming back, I remember talking to my parents and there was just really no rush to grow up quite yet. Um, And I had that extra year to play with all my friends and play hockey one more year before you know kind of hanging it up and not being an athlete anymore um and so and the girls coming back were some of my best friends so it just kind of made it an easy decision so we'll kind of circle back to maybe a little bit of your roots when you first started you grew up in Woodbury Minnesota talk about what that culture was like in Minnesota as a child you know the hockey culture so talk about just you know was there a lot of kids your age that that played that sport Oh yeah. Hockey, I think is like the sport in Minnesota. Um, I mean, we are literally called the state of hockey, but yeah, I grew up in Woodbury, Minnesota, which is like the East side of the twin cities and everyone played hockey pretty much. Um, all my friends did boys and girls. I'm one of four. So I have three brothers and all three of them played hockey growing up. There's been a handful of good like hockey players, I would say that came out of Woodbury, but yeah, I mean, it's just like a, culture like it's just a 
it's a thing in the north um we were always you know skating on outdoor rinks I think in Woodbury there's like five or six public outdoor skating rinks and that's not including like ponds or, or rinks that people make in their backyards um there's like hockey day in Minnesota which is a huge thing every year kind of showcasing high school and college hockey and then the Minnesota wild play that night um but yeah for me I just have like vivid memories skating on the outdoor rink in my neighborhood with my brothers and like all my older brother's friends and then my friends and my mom would like run pizzas down and hand warmers and we'd come back with like our toes bright white and we were like well we don't know like it just happened like we're gonna stay out there though but yeah it's definitely a thing in Minnesota is hockey what was your maybe first memory of 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 playing hockey and how much did your brothers push you to to play yeah so my first memory um I think was I started hockey at the same time as my younger brothers and they're two years younger and they're both twins um and I hated being on the ice with my little brothers like I just didn't like it and so I wanted to quit because I I didn't like being out there with them um and so then finally Woodbury got a girls program so they had a U8 program U8 and U10 I think and my dad switched me over to that and I loved it um super fun you just got to skate with only girls my dad coached and then my older brother also played growing up and he had the chance to be on some super successful teams and I think that just kind of grew my love for the game even more because I was always at the rink every single night every day of the week you said eight uh, u8 u10 typically is that usually when girls will start to play in their own leagues or do girls start to play a little bit with the boys and then it just kind of breaks out yeah, I think it kind of depends. Um, for Woodbury, where I grew up, it was U8s, which I think I had played with them when I was like six, seven, eight. And then you move up to U10 um, and then U12 and U14, I think. Um, but for me, I skated with girls during the season. And then I always would do like summer stuff with the like with boys or we would play three on three, like in the fall before the season started, there'd be like leagues that were boys and girls. Um, and then, you know, there's some girls in Minnesota that just choose to play boys hockey all the way through and then they switch over to girls at high school. So that's kind of like a personal choice. Did you ever think about making that choice? I didn't. Um, a, a lot of my friends played hockey, like I said, so I always had like my group of friends and then I was really close with the boys my age. And so we would all, I mean, we would like practice together because you had to share ice times typically. So it'd be like, Banime or PBA with the U12A sometimes and so then like we would play games with the boys so you're still kind of getting that like experience of skating with the boys but there was checking when I was younger and I was like I don't want to get hit by some like six foot monster of a boy so you know you said that you didn't want to get hit by a six foot monster of a guy what like what was kind of like your mindset when you were playing with these guys yeah, honestly, I, it was fun, though. I mean, you, there's definitely there was times where the guys were just a lot bigger than you. So you kind of had to be cautious. But I just think boys are I mean, they're they're very fast. They're, I feel like girls, at least when I was growing up, there wasn't a huge amount of girls that were at a certain level. Um, that was more like summer hockey was kind of like the top level girls and you were being like you were able to be super competitive with. So I think boys, they were just bigger and stronger at the time. Um, so you, you just kind of like, it was just more competitive, I think. And you were kind of able to progress even further because you were just always put up against boys that were older, stronger, bigger, and you just kind of had to learn how to compete and how to play in that environment. You know, you played at Evamidji State as a forward. Did you ever move around positions, played left wing? Did you play defense? Do you ever play in goal or was it just, has it always been forward for you? Yeah, so I actually played D up until sixth grade, and I was only D, and then I think it was like a tournament <laughs> thing, and I don't even know how it happened, but then I was moved to forward, um, and then it just kind of stuck from seventh and eighth grade, and then when I got to high school, uh, I played wing. I played right wing in high school, and then actually at Bemidji State, I've played all three, so I've played center, right wing, and left wing in my five years here. 
what which position would you say you you excelled the most at I would probably say right wing but I didn't mind center or left wing either and I say that because I played right wing in high school too so that's kind of where I was more comfortable when I came in as a freshman they put me at center and I had seriously like never taken a draw I had never played center before and so that felt super foreign and uncomfortable to me but then as the time went on it was no big deal like my sophomore junior year if someone went down um, coach Scanny would kind of toss me in at center if he needed to and then it just I felt way more comfortable just being older and having already played a year but I'd say right wing for sure you know you mentioned ice times were kind of a big thing what was you know a hockey practice like when you were growing up you know for for those who might not know what how maybe intense a hockey practice is uh, for the youth Uh, honestly I would say it kind of depends um they're typically for Woodbury it was only like an hour like you had an hour time slot and it was just kind of what could you get done so typically we would start with some sort of warm-up drills um and then I feel like in youth you don't really do too much like line stuff like you're not really in set lines um or like systems really um but then we always played small area games that was like a huge thing was just being like having that competitive environment so a lot of small area games so we'll transition now into what your time was like at the high school level you attended Hill Murray High School and you were part of this high school that made three consecutive state tournament appearances, won two straight cha- uh, state championships in 2014 and 2015. You know, talk about that experience at the high school level. And, you know, what was, was your <laughs> high school a very, you know, elite high school? You know, how, how is the high school, you know, women's hockey in, in Minnesota, maybe compared to other parts of the country? Yeah, you know, I think Minnesota high school hockey is probably the best high school hockey you'll find in the country. Um, And I say that because I think out east, you know, like I think Massachusetts has a lot of great high school players on the boys and girls side, but they're more like boarding schools. Whereas, um, and like you could get kids from Boston or New Hampshire, really wherever. Um, Whereas Minnesota high school hockey, I went to a private school. So I think some people would say like I had girls from all over. Uh, but most schools, there's there's public schools that, you know, just kind of keep top level talent. And yeah, like you said, I was fortunate enough to go to Hill. I would say we were a very elite level team. I think my junior, yeah, my junior, the class above me, just in the whole state of Minnesota, um, it kind of goes by birth year in Minnesota. That's kind of how we talk. So the 98 birth year girls were very talented. So my junior year, I think there was 11 or 12 division one commits uh, on that team alone. And that's the year that was my junior year. So we got third that year. And I think we were like 29 or 30 and one, like it was, like, it was absurd. We didn't lose a game all year until the semis of the state tournament. So, you know, you mentioned a lot of D1 commits at your high school. What was the you know, college recruitment, like when you were as a junior, as a senior in, you know, you were finishing up high school, you know, how many schools kind of scouted you or reached out? Yeah, you know, that's what's crazy is when I was going through the recruiting stuff, I think I went on my first college visit at 13, which is so young. Like, I don't even know how you're able to make that decision of what you're going to want at 18. So then eventually they put in a rule where I don't think you can even talk to girls until they're a junior or senior now. But at the time, you could go on visits at seriously like 13. So I went on my first college visit spring after my freshman season of high school hockey. And then I was committed like September of my junior year. Um, I think I committed like the first week of September. So before my junior year of high school even began. But yeah, it's really, it's chaotic and it's hectic and it's a lot of stress because I think at that time when I was being recruited, you saw a lot of young girls commit so early and you kind of felt like you were behind if you weren't already committed. And so it was just kind of this constant pressure of why aren't, why don't I have an offer yet? Or this person's going here and they have already committed. What, like, why am I not committed? Or I need to make a decision. Some coaches were like, Hey, like, I need you to decide by 
August 15th, if you're coming here or not. Um, so they kind of put a lot of pressure on you. And there was a lot of, I think I did three summers of like prospects, which is they bring, it's like a tur like tournaments in the cities and there's three weekends throughout the summer and they bring in mostly division one, but some D like top D3 schools, I'd say, uh, college coaches from all across the country. And you play five or six games in a weekend. And it's just like a big showcase. And so it's a lot, you're just constantly around all these college coaches. And like I said, you kind of feel a bit pressured into making a decision. Um, so I think it's good that they now have these like rules in place that you can't recruit until they're a certain age, because I think at, as a junior, you're in a much better position to make a decision on where you want to be than when you're 13 years old. Mm -hmm. What spoke to you about Bemidji State? I love the, the area. Um, I'm so like I'm, I'm from the cities, like I said, and it was just a nice change of pace being up north. We're right on Lake Bemidji. And so uh, there, I mean, there's things to do, you know, there's you're right on the lake. And then I went to a small high school. So Bemidji's not that big of a campus. And I think academically having that time or ability to communicate one on one with your professors and have them get to know you and you know your classmates really well was huge for me. And then the hockey side, I knew that I wanted to play in the WCHA. I knew that I wanted to stay in Minnesota, um, but I also wanted to be a little bit further from home uh, so that I was, I was far enough away to feel like I was at college, but I was still close enough where if I wanted to come home, I could. And then I had a high school teammate who is a year older and she, she went here and then it was kind of just the coaching staff and just kind of the accumulation of all that, I was like, I think this is the place for me. You know, you mentioned how a lot of girls that, you know, went to your high school ended up playing at the college level. Were you automatically set on playing college hockey or were you just like, okay, you know, I like playing at high school, but, you know, maybe you kind of got pushed by some of these older girls that were going at the college level, we were like, okay, maybe I could just follow that same path. Yeah, um, I don't think so. I think when I came in as a freshman, uh, I had played soccer that year too. And for soccer, we went to the state tournament. And so I had missed like the captain's practices for hockey. So I hadn't really been skating. And I actually made JV that year for like the start of it. And I remember being just absolutely devastated. And I was like, this is something that I think after that happened, I was like, this is something I really want. Like, I want to play high school hockey at a really high level with the best talent in the state. And then I want to go on and I want to play college. So, like I said, I had committed my beginning of my junior year. So before that season even began. And at that time, there was two or three girls younger than me that had already committed. And then that class above me was just kind of a powerhouse. I mean, there was like six girls that were committed in that class. Lindsay, um, you know, hockey, hockey involves a skating and, and if you can't skate, then you really can't play hockey because there's nothing else you can really, you can't really run with the hockey stick in, in a game. Um, besides hockey, was there any other activities that you did skating wise that helped you develop your uh, hockey skills skating wise? Um, not really, which I think some people are really surprised by when I say that, because I've gotten that's like the one thing that I think I've gotten complimented a lot on is my stride and I think it's a lot of the time just it just kind of came from growing up and skating outside with my brother and his friends um and then in Woodbury they would do kind of like skill nights and you're instead of like your coaches running a practice they would have like a skating coach come on and that was like once a month um they do edge work with you but I, I, I didn't do it a lot personally, but I have a lot of friends that did and that loved it. Definitely. Um, for a novice, for somebody who wants to try to get into skating, uh, what are, what, what's like the most basic way to uh, start skating and uh, whether it's ice or rollers, what are some basic exercises or um, things you, that a person can try to, if they want to be a skater? Yeah, I think you kind of just got to go for it. Um, I think, if you want to try to skate on ice, you kind of just got to be willing to strap the skates on. Uh, they have like little kind of like chairs that you can hold on to and they kind of like glide on the ice. So then uh, you can kind of hold yourself up. Mm -hmm. And I know that they use that a lot with younger kids or I mean, even like parents that want to go skate on Christmas day, but like don't know how. 
but I think hockey players are known for having really strong legs. So, I mean, you could just kind of try to like improve your leg strength. Um, but I think it's just kind of repetition, honestly, and just getting more comfortable with being on the ice or on wheels if you're trying to rollerblade around somewhere. Yeah, sounds like a lot of like ankle mobility stuff and the squats and stuff like that. So being a student athlete, I was a student athlete myself. Uh, and of course, my experience, I faced many challenges, many obstacles. Obviously, uh, I, I, my challenges may have been different than yours. So what were some of the challenges you faced as being a student athlete? And uh, how did you manage the stress that came with it? Yeah, you know, I think, like you said, being a student athlete, there's a lot of stress and a lot of challenges. And I think it, it kind of teaches you time management. Um, I'm feeling super overwhelmed my freshman year just of trying to have a routine and a schedule. And what do I do when I'm missing classes on Thursdays and Fridays? And what do I do if I'm missing a test? How do I get caught up? Like, how do I stay on top of stuff? Um, and I think that was probably my biggest challenge. And I think just kind of setting a routine, I tried to like kind of schedule my classes almost at the same time every year so that my schedule typically stayed the same. Like, oh, I have class from nine to noon and then I have hockey from one thirty to four and then I can do homework at night. And then on the road, I mean, it's, it's hard to focus when you're with all your friends on a bus or a plane or wherever you're going. Um, but I would always try to do some. And then as I got older, I would try to just get it all done before we left. And I'm, I'm all, I don't know if this was you, but I'm, I can't do homework after like eight o'clock. My brain just completely shuts off. And then as I got to be a senior in this year, I was like the second I come home from the rink, I am not doing a single thing of work for school. Uh, so then it just kind of became even more of a, okay, well, if you're not going to do it after you have to do it before, but I'd say time management is for sure. Probably one of the hardest or biggest challenges that any student athlete faces. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree, agree with that. I, I remember having those struggles, especially. Do you have like, did you have a lot of morning practices? We didn't. We were always in the afternoon. And so the boys would skate. They'd have ice from 1.15 to 3.15, I think. So we were always 3.30 to 5.30 was our ice time. And then we would work out at 1 or 2. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have morning practices. I ran cross country, so we would go in the mornings, and I would have to, and I would have to go to bed early because of morning practices. And so, like, I felt like my time was just like cut like that much more. And it definitely, definitely, time management, and like every, I think every athlete does it. It definitely depends on when you're morning, when you, whenever you're competing, and when you have practice. I think that's where the um, where you can really set up like that routine. And, and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think it also is like, if you're a morning person or a night person, I have teammates where they're like, I will stay up until 3 a.m. doing homework, but I will not wake up in the morning where I'm the complete opposite. Like I would way rather get up at seven or whenever, but once it's like eight o'clock, I am done for. So I think it's kind of just figuring out what works for you too. Absolutely, yeah. I wanna talk a little bit about the uh, conditioning aspect of a hockey player. Uh, what does the uh, what does the off season look like conditioning wise, and then what is the conditioning like uh, during the season? Yeah, so I've stayed up here the past two summers and lifted with our strength coaches here, and we would lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we do conditioning Tuesday, Thursday. And yeah, I mean, when you're lifting, it's just a lot of strength and power and you know, you're front squatting, benching, hang cleaning, you know, you're doing compound exercises. And then that conditioning aspect of it. I mean, we would run the full length of the football field like 20 times just for really fun. It felt like, um, but yeah, a lot of running, a lot of sprints, a lot of like plyometrics and like jump squats to kind of get that explosiveness in. Cause as a hockey player, you want to be explosive. You want to be quick off your toes, kind of being able to being ready to go anywhere. Um, and then in season, the lifts are, you know, a bit lighter. It's more mobility. Um, you just want to feel, you want to feel your best every day so that you can perform because it's obviously it gets to be a long season when you're practicing Monday through Thursday and playing games Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I mean, on, on the ice, you're, you're skating obviously all the time. Um, and there's definitely drills where, you know, you get your heart rate up and you 
get going up and down the ice. And then kind of after long breaks, we would come back and do, you know, Herbie's or some sort of skating conditioning. When you were saying that, I just saw the movie Miracle. I don't know if you've seen that, where they like, where they, they made them do like a bunch of down backs. Yeah. So that's what we do, like kind of before, after like a break. And we typically do like two is the most we've done, I think. Um, but then you have to get it within 50 seconds, I think. But yeah, that's about the most conditioning we would do like on the ice. Yeah, that doesn't sound like sound like fun. And oh, I do run. I do run a lot. So it might it might feel like nothing to me, but it still sounds pretty hard. <laughs> we, we were both competing during the time of COVID. Obviously, there was a lot of things like you had to get tested before uh, before you went out and compete. It can be a challenge sometimes and and also wearing your mask and doing like all these uh, precautionary things. Uh, what were some of the challenges that you had to deal with COVID season? Did you, was there any point where where there was like a shutdown due to COVID on the team? And uh, how what was that like? And how did the team how did you and your teammates be able to manage through that period? Yeah, you know, COVID year was really hard, I think, for everyone. Uh, we were testing three times a week for normal, I mean, non-game weeks or games against, um, I think it's like NSIC schools, which is like us, St. Cloud, Duluth, Mankato. But when you're playing a Big Ten school, as in Minnesota, Wisconsin, or Ohio State, you had to test six days a week. So it got to be a lot and just kind of the I mean, we, we eventually put in like a bubble rule and that was just to ensure that we weren't shut down again. Normally our season starts end of September and I don't think our first games were until December, like second week, first or second week of December last year, which is crazy. I think we were, yeah, we were shut down, I think four times, uh, which is at that point, I think it was the two weeks. If you were quarantining, it was two weeks. So we would typically test before we left and then we would go home for two weeks and then we'd have to report back and test again. So, I mean, yeah, it was just kind of a lot of added stress of needing to be careful about who you're hanging out with, always wearing your mask, got to be a lot. I know when it, when we first got back, we used to have to wear our masks while, like, while skating during practice and that was so hard. It was just crazy, you know, it was just really an unprecedented time and nobody really knew how to handle it. So you just kind of had to, make do with what you could you know um but yeah it was a crazy year for sure yeah yeah absolutely I I wish like with like the mask like have you ever heard of those altitude masks mm -hmm. like yep. it would have been that would have been like the right time to like use one and just like yep. I suggested that because um I think was it our boys or some some team was going out to play in Colorado so like there was the altitude change and I was like this is the time for you guys like I was like you guys are gonna feel great because you've been skating with masks on forever and like they're like I don't know but Dude, that's just brilliant that would just be brilliant I... right I yeah <laughs> Lindsay you played I believe you set the record for most games played at Bemidji State at 163 for you what was the most memorable game that you played in and what will you miss the most about playing in college yeah, you know, um, 163, that's a lot of games. Uh, my most memorable, I think, would be uh, my sophomore year. We swept Ohio State at home, and that was just kind of a really fun series. I have, I have a couple most memorable. Uh, that one was really awesome because I think at the time Ohio was ranked four, and we had not been playing well. I think we were like 0-9, and... and we ended up sweeping them that weekend. And then we got to play in Hockey Day, Minnesota. That was also my sophomore year. Um, and that was just so cool because as a kid growing up in Minnesota, that's something that you always dream about is playing on Hockey Day. And it was in Bemidji and it was beautiful. And that was awesome. And then I would also say the Ohio State game that we had this year at home, the one that the game winning goal was on Sports Center, And I think that was just really kind of cool for our team because obviously Ohio had another awesome year. So um, I think I'm just going to miss the girls. Um, I think I, I only ever had brothers. So I think just getting a team of 28 this year. And I mean, in past years too, obviously I think college is different than high school because you live with these 
girls, you go to school, you go to the rink, you're together every single day. So like you just form relationships and bonds that nobody else will really understand. So I think I'm going to miss the girls the most and just, you know, the weekend road trips or workouts, um, just time with them. For you, what was, you went to just different colleges, different states. You can't count Bemidji State. What was the, your personal favorite like venue that you had to play in? My favorite uh, was probably Ohio State. And I think I always loved playing. I think they were my favorite opponent that we ever played because I think our games against them were always, sometimes I feel like the score didn't always indicate the play of the game, but um, they were always typically pretty physical, pretty competitive. Um, I think their rink is fun because it almost feels like a high school rink. It's just really small and there's maybe like, I mean, there's only seating on one side and there's maybe, maybe 12, 15 bleachers, like height wise. But yeah, I think that was always the most fun. And then, like I said, one of our girls from my original class transferred there this year to play. And so I think just getting to play her this year was also really fun and just kind of added to the excitement of playing Ohio. So you know, your college career is over. What is the plan now, you know, once the school year ends, you know, what, what is your goal moving forward? Would you be willing to take that role of maybe being a coach or, you know, what's that next step? Yeah. You know, my mom actually asked me that same question the other day, um, if I would want to coach or do something. And I think at some point, I think it, it would be cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to move back to the cities in the next couple of weeks here. And I hope to get a job or pursue a career in HR And I think it would, I'm going to move home for about a year. So I'll live with my parents. And I think that it'd be cool if my dad and I coached like a Woodbury 10U, 12U team. Um, And just, I mean, I would start there and see how it goes, but I think that would kind of be cool to give back to Woodbury in the community. You know, I am curious, you know, how many girls that go on to have a successful college career play after college? you know, professional and how many can get the privilege to play for the, you know, women's Olympic team? Yeah, you know, I think as far as the Olympic team, it is really like the top of the top, like it's just a super elite level. And so that's obviously not easy for every and really anyone to achieve, you know, you have to be the best of the best. Uh, Professional, you know, you could, there's different, there's different options now. I think it's a lot more girls would have a really good opportunity to go overseas Um, and play professionally. There's a handful of leagues over there that I know a lot of college players in recent years have gone over to. And then, you know, now there's the NWHL and you could try to play for one of those teams. Um, So I think there's there's definitely more options and I would hope that there, um, even in the coming years, is even more options for girls, but there's definitely a lot more options than there were, say, 10, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So let's say, think about your, your 12, 13 years old, what would you like someone that's maybe your age to ask, you know, 10, 13 year old you about playing hockey? Like what, what advice would you be giving them and how important is this sport to really help the, the community for, for girls athletics? Yeah. You know, I think every women's sport, every girl's sport, is important to female athletics and seeing young girls in in sports. Um, I think if I were to give advice to a 10 or 12 year old girl, I would just say to not give up and to just always believe in yourself because I think there's there's going to be times when people put you down or don't believe in you. And I think that if you want to be playing at a top level, if you want to play college hockey, you can absolutely make it happen and I just I think it's cool how supportive all the female sports are of one another and I think that hopefully that just keeps growing and growing and yeah before we let you go do you have any social media accounts that you'd be willing to promote or or maybe other ways that maybe young female athletes can get a hold of you and reach out yeah yeah um my instagram is just Lindsay underscore Featherstone. And that's really the only social, I mean, I have a Twitter, but I don't really ever go on it, but um, I typically, I go on Insta and I see DMs or comments and things like that. 
what would be uh, one word of advice to uh, any athlete out there trying to reach their goals? Um, I would say just keep working. And like I said, believing in yourself, because I think that the sky's the limit kind of when you do that. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, Lindsay, thank you so much for, for your time today and hearing your stories. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me. I think with that case, you know, have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You too, guys. Calling me down, 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 down. That foolish heart turns out to be on a beat. All that I am is all that you see. You don't need nobody else. And your pain is all the same. For those who are listening to our show for the first time, all our past and future episodes are available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Sports Mecca.